Hi there everyone, Guardian E here with another live reaction and first impression video for Fire Emblem Heroes. This time we're going to be taking a look at the Fate trailer that drops for the next set of special heroes to go into the game in just a few short days. So we do have the silhouettes pulled up here and honestly your guess is as good as it is mine. Um, the silhouette on the left does look like they have a tail and a pretty large hand and at least you know, based upon the clues that Faye dropped it does sound like this is going to be flame or fire tribal themed. Not entirely sure we're just gonna have to wait and see how the trailer pans out. I was kind of hoping that we were gonna get like a, a counterpart to the Phantom Thieves and have like detectives or something like that but it doesn't really seem like that's going to be thematically the case so um, let's go ahead we got the trailer pulled up here right now haven't looked at the thumbnail or the name of the banner um, looking away right now but let's go ahead and hit play and watch together for the first time let's see what this is all about and there we go okay so fierce is a raging inferno definitely fire themed special heroes to battle and first up, oh, is that Lynn Blazing Whirlwind? She looks fantastic. Wow. Kaboon art, I recognize that anywhere. She looks fantastic. Firelight Lance, godlike reflexes for the special. Oh, she's a lance wielder. That's so cool. All right, all right. Up next, oh my god, Raging Inferno. You will scream and struggle. Oh, that's Muspel. I was like, who is this Edge Master? Like, it's just like, entire face cover, shrouded and covered. Breath of Flame, Attack Defense Catch 4, Dragon's Wrath 4 for the B slot. Already getting a tier 4 for Dragon's Wrath. That is an imposing uh, dragon sprite. Alright, so we're getting Muspel. I mean, that's certainly on theme. I'm still reeling from that Lin. That Lin was gorgeous. Oh, it's Rinka! Consuming Flame as well. Obviously, very, very much on theme too. Okay. So she's going to be a Sword Infantry. Probably going to be the 4-star special unit of the banner, right? Yeah, definitely. Look at those skills. But, um, so she's got an Inheritable Weapon. Odd Tempest, as well as a uh, Ideal 3 for the A slot. So that's interesting. And Soothing Warmth. Huh. Oh, I didn't even recognize her. That's Tana and Peony. Wow. It's a different art style for them, so that's why it was kind of threw me off. I didn't fully recognize them. I love me some Tana, though. Tana and Lin on a banner? And Rinka? Uh, so we got a harmonized skill here. Uh, we're going to take a closer look at all this stuff later uh, on a second watch through, but we just want to kind of enjoy... Peony has a drum. As it's really cool. Okay. So they are going to be uh, oh a dagger unit. So they're a green dagger unit. Ooh, I like the lighting in that special. Again, with the whole fire theme, uh, bite of flame paralog story. So it's an interesting theme, certainly like the flame tribe type of thing. I'm not definitely, definitely not what I was expecting. Uh, and that looks like <laughs> that looks like Mordecai uh, over there on the left. So it does look like we are going to be getting him as a free unit, I think. Um, unless that's somebody else, but looks like it to me. And so he will be part of the Tempest Trial, I'm assuming. Rinka is going to be the four-star focus unit of the banner. And, of course, the banner is going to be starting on the 7th of September and extending for what is effectively an entire month here. Um, we are going to be able to go for these units. So that's... All right. And then, uh, pres presumably nothing else here is other than the, you know, the guaranteed spark for Fey Pass owners. Yes, and the Celestial Stone as well. So, yeah. All right. So which, what, what, what Lin alt number does does that make this? Does she now have the most alts in the game? Uh, which I have no problem with, to be honest. I mean, she's the most popular female character in the entire, you know, series, arguably. So I, I, I mean, I don't have an issue with that. And she looks fantastic in this trailer, uh, and in the uh, in this rendition. Rinka again, really, really cool that that they added her in here. I think that's a perfect fit for the theme. The theme itself. I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's cool. I don't think it's, like, amazing or anything. Um, certainly compelling. the compelling element to me is the characters. Uh, the character choices here is, is really what drives this one home. And the art. I think the art overall is fantastic. Even though I didn't, like, fully recognize Tana and 
and peony in the art style, um, I do think it, it looks very pretty. So let's go ahead and rewind, take a closer look at the units, take a closer look at the art, see if ultimately this is a, uh, a banner that I think is worth pulling on. So here is going to be Flame Tribe Lin as an infantry lance unit. So that is going to be a unique archetype for Lin Emblem, which is always great to have diversification for, uh, for those character-specific theme teams. Uh, would have been nice to have an axe unit, I feel, just because they are lacking in, of course, the green side of things. But a lance will definitely do you good. I think I think that's a great addition. And she looks absolutely fantastic. I I love, like, the uh, the loose sash garb that she has going, as well as the rope belt. Um, she just looks really cool and confident with this, the, uh, the actual pole, like, across her shoulders, her arms akimbo, wide set stance. Just really cool, confident. Um, has like that that fiery headdress uh, on top of the green which really matches well and you have like the signature kaboon art um, and overall aesthetic with the, the beautiful shading on the skin you do get a little uh, glance at her abs there which is very attractive long winding ponytail uh, she's definitely she's definitely rocking the outfit um, and I think that art is worth pulling alone to be honest with you so she is going to have a fire light lance 16 might non inheritable of course killer slaying effect I already like what I see at start of combat, if unit's HP is greater than or equal to 25%, grants plus 5 to all stats to unit during combat, deals damage equal to 15% of foe's attack. Okay, that's 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 some nice fixed damage, alright. And also, if unit's speed is greater than or equal to foe's speed minus 4, inflict special cooldown charge minus 1 on foe per attack. Uh, only highest value applied does not stack. At start of combat, if unit's HP is greater than or equal to 25%, Grant special cooldown count minus one to unit and allies within four spaces of unit after combat. Interesting. So she does have a built-in AOE HP condition uh, special cooldown charge reduction after combat, which is the first of its of its ilk that we've seen. We haven't seen anything like quite like that. Um, built into a weapon certainly gives you it has some hints of special spiral built in there with the cooldown reduction after combat Which means that she probably can very likely chain specials over and over and over again Especially since she has killer slaying effect up front uh, and the rest of it very very good I mean as far as the the fixed damage that's always going to be useful to have that 15% of foes attack Not based on her own attack, which is interesting um but also, that's going to be useful in and of itself. And then the speed, greater than or equal to foe speed minus 4, is probably going to be a pretty easy condition to meet. I suspect that she is going to be something of an offensive powerhouse, with attack and speed being the uh, the power stats. And then uh, the special cooldown charge minus 1 on foe per attack um, is, is definitely going to be useful at mitigating uh, their special charge. So... Uh, speaking of specials, Godlike Reflexes, she has her own unique special three-turn cooldown, which means with the Killer Slaying effect, it's going to be at a two-turn cooldown for her. Uh, if unit speed is greater than or equal to foe speed minus four, so obviously working very well condition-wise with the weapon, and unit special is ready or unit's special triggered during combat, oh, so we're seeing that effect again, deals damage equal to 15% of unit's speed. Okay, all right. When special triggers, reduces damage from foe's attack by 40%. So it has a built-in damage reduction as well. Special triggers only if unit speed is greater than or equal to foe's speed minus 4. Okay, so it does have like this multi-tiered effect. However, all of it is sort of uh, routed around the actual trigger of the special. It's not just a passive. So uh, as long as she has that speed condition, she's going to deal 15% of her speed and ha enjoy 40% damage reduction. That is, uh, that's kind of a, a, a great double-sided element to a special. It's going to be very useful. Uh, she has her own unique A slot skill as well. Wow, she's got a lot of unique stuff for herself. Verdict of Sake. If unit is within four spaces of an ally, grants bonus to units, uh, all of unit stats during combat equal to X times four plus four. Uh, X equals number of allies within four spaces. Maximum bonus of plus 12. Also, if unit special is ready or unit special triggered before or during combat, unit deals plus five damage, uh, excluding AoEs. And when unit deals damage to foe during combat, restores seven HP to unit uh so that's an in combat heal which is pretty useful that's pretty useful as well triggers even when zero damage is dealt that's a packed a slot skill generally speaking a slot skills i mean they're centered around boosting your stat line obviously you know they've evolved since then you have a lot of additional effects 
<clears throat> but this one in particular is 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 pretty expansive. I mean, uh, within four spaces of an ally is so easy to meet. You're probably gonna. It's probably probably be harder to not activate Verdict of Sakai. So the way this reads with a plus twelve uh, maximum bonus means that you just need two allies within four spaces. So so easily doable because that's gonna be a you know a two times four, which is eight plus four, which is twelve. So that is going to actually encapsulate the the maximum value you can have to all of your stats. Plus 12 is amazing. I mean, that's absolutely fantastic. Even if you have one ally near you, that means that you're gonna enjoy plus eight to all of your stats. I mean, that is also, that that alone, just having one ally near you, basically meets the condition to have uh, a stat boost, the equivalent of a lot of like the best A-slot skills out there. So, and that's, you know, that's only the first element of this. Um, and then if the special charge is ready, deals plus five damage. So you get additional fixed damage. So she's going to be not only, you know, a, a stat a stat boosting monster for herself. She's also going to have some pretty hefty fixed damage associated with her with her abilities. Um, the healing as well is always going to be useful, especially upon attack. It's not after combat. Um, that's definitely going to be great and actually add to her hardiness in a great way. Uh, Shield Pulse 3 as well. <clears throat> now, that's interesting. I didn't think about the, the implications of godlike reflexes with Shield Pulse as the B-slot. But Shield Pulse 3, at the start of turn 1, if units attack trigger special, grant special clinic out minus 2. Uh, reduce the special dealt by unit uh, to unit by 5 when special triggers. That's fascinating. That also means that on turn one, she is going to have an insta charge to godlike reflexes. She's going to have the um, killer slaying effect to bring godlike reflexes to a two turn cooldown. And then shield pulse is going to further reduce it to a zero turn cooldown. So she's going to have godlike reflexes right away at the ready, right when you're going into combat on turn one. So that is going to be exceptional. Uh, speed smoke th four, excuse me, after combat. Uh, Inflicts minus seven speed on target and foes within two spaces of target through their next actions and grants plus six speed and dodge to unit for one turn. Now, it does certainly feel like she is going to be able to take full, full advantage of that. A lot of her kit overall is based around having speed higher than her opponent. And not only higher than her opponent, but just higher than her opponent's uh, speed minus four. So that makes the condition even easier to meet. Uh, I mean, overall, her, her kit is stacked. She's going to be an offensive powerhouse. She's going to enjoy some damage reduction as well as special cooldown charge negation on the enemy. The heal built into the attacking is also going to further influence her uh, sustainability and, and vitality. And, and then in addition to the fact that she's going to get that shield pulse baked in with the damage reduction, all that good stuff. I mean, she's, she's looking really good. Um, she's looking really good, and then she also has a, a great deal of fixed damage, which of course does obviate the, you know, the 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 counterside of of uh, having damage reduction on the enemy team um, in, in dealing and in, in dealing with high high defense foes. So, I, I, and her conditions are so so easy to meet. Again, Verdict of Sakai is a very very good A slot skill. It's very good. The condition of just having one ally within four spaces is basically going to give her some really great. Uh, stat boosts right up front um yeah no she's she's stacked she's definitely stacked all right so here she is in action godlike reflexes is gonna proc defensively shield pulse as well and then here is the attacking art she looks gorgeous <laughs> she looks absolutely amazing uh love the uh the sideways swing that she has the look of sort of concentration on her face as well uh the skirt has kind of kicked up a little bit to give you a better view of her legs it's just all coming together i think uh really fantastic stuff and here is muspel who is going to be a dragon cavalry unit uh colorless dragon cavalry unit um not the biggest fan of muspel personally just just generally speaking his design is is okay to me usually and uh, his personality sucks i just don't just don't like him as a character that being said his design here is pretty awesome i, I think he fits the tribal theme like perfectly as far as the fire tribe naturally since he is you know uh he's all about the flames right um i do like the sort of almost halo or band of fire and flame that's uh, surrounding him and like bridged through his uh, his two outstretched arms i think that's really great sort of the shirtless look fantastic uh you know he has the horns the fiery mane uh and then of course i think the the trappings of the the uh um, the actual rope belt and the talismans and the lanterns coming off of them. I, it just, it, it, it really does come together. I think, I think uh, overall the look really, really suits him. Uh, like the purple talismans on the side as well, it kind of breaks up the, the monotony of the look as a whole. 
you know, in terms of amplifying Muspel's look from his OG version, I think this is a huge improvement. Uh, definitely a glow up in my my opinion. So Muspel is going to have Breath of Flame 16 Might, Killer Slaying Effect. At the start of turn, if special cooldown count is at its max value, grants special cooldown count minus one. Uh, if unit initiates combat or is within two spaces of an ally, grants attack plus six to unit and inflict attack minus six on foe during combat. And unit makes a guaranteed follow-up attack and reduces the percentage of foe's non-special uh, reduced damage by X percent skills by 50 percent. Oh. Example, a foe with reduced damage by 45% skill would reduce damage by 23% instead. If foes, uh, and then adaptive damage. So he does have the whole uh, damage reduction reduction. <laughs> God, it's so silly. Uh, so he has damage reduction reduction. He's going to have damage reduction uh, off of the uh, the enemy that he is engaging against. I mean, it's, it's a stacked weapon, of course. Killer slaying effect, and then in addition to that, having the extra special cooldown charge at the start of the turn. Moonbow is a two-turn cooldown, which of course does mean that he is going to get, at the start of every turn, uh, an insta charge to his Moonbow. That's not too shabby. Uh, and then, of course, if he is player phasing or within two spaces, which is pretty easy to meet as a condition, plus six attack to him, minus six attack to his opponent, which of course is going to add to his overall value as a sort of a tanky approacher. He's going to be able to um, have a lot more sustain with the minus six attack debuff on the enemy. Guarantee follow up attack is not something to be uh, to be underestimated as an additional ability, and it reduces again damage reduction re reduction. <laughs> Um, so that is going to let him hit a lot harder and go through and pierce essentially a lot of damage reduction abilities out there that are not specials. Just bear that in mind. That's that's the specific um, caveat there. So uh, overall, um, great weapon, Moonbow. Attack defense catch four for the A slot is a great uh, choice for him because again that's going to increase his defensive capabilities his tankiness as well as how hard he hits i mean that's what he wants dragon's wrath four for the b slot okay so let's take a look at this reduces damage from foe's first attack during combat by 25 percent if unit's attack is greater than foe's res unit's first attack deals damage equal to 25 percent of unit's attack minus foe's res during combat all right so first and foremost reduces damage from foe's first attack in combat by 25 percent um, that's just a straight damage reduction that he's going to enjoy. Uh, additionally, um, as long as so, if it's if his attack is greater than foe's res, so let's just say, you know, not notwithstanding the whole adaptive damage thing, they're attacking into res. If his attack is higher than the foe's res, then his first attack is essentially going to deal an additional twenty five percent of the damage that he would have done. Um, you can kind of look at it that way. So he's going to get he's going to enjoy additional uh, damage attached onto his first attack and enjoy damage reduction to the enemy's first attack, basically. Uh, and then, of course, Domain of Flame, which is his C-slot skill. Uh, grants attack defense plus four, and the effect, if unit's attack is greater than foe's res during combat, unit's first attack deals damage equal to 30% of unit's attack minus foe's res to allies within two spaces during combat. If unit is within two spaces of an ally, grants attack defense plus four to unit during combat, and also the same effect, so that he enjoys it as well. So it is basically a mutually shared buff. So yeah, so that of course synergizes with Dragon's Wrath. Dragon's Wrath is going to be an inheritable skill, um, which is very, very good. Uh, dragons are definitely going to enjoy that one. I mean, overall, I do think that his kit is is a pretty darn strong one. He has all of the things you would, you would expect. I can't honestly remember what Muspel originally has as part of his Breath of Flame and how much this just mirrors that um, in terms of ability, but... There's a lot of good stuff here. There's a lot of stuff to, to appreciate. The, the, the in-combat buff, in-combat debuff, the insta-charge to Moonbow, the damage reduction, and then the damage reduction reduction, as well as the guaranteed follow-up attack. All right, here is his transformation. I, I mean, the, the dragon sprite is super cool, not gonna lie. And then here is his super edgy, super, super edgy art. It, he, he basically turns into, like, an Oni, which I think makes a lot of sense. I mean, thematically, that kind of fits into the whole, um, the whole theming as well. So, so here is Rinka, and she is going to be an infantry sword unit, which in some ways feels a little bit like a death sentence. It is such an overpopulated pool, especially from a four-star special or four-star uh, focus uh, perspective. It does have a lot of competition in there, um, certainly. Uh, but from an art perspective, she looks fantastic. I mean, I think she does have the tribal theme going, which de definitely matches her look 
to a T. A beautiful, luxurious red headdress flowing down behind her. Love the shading in that. She has the little Oni horns as well. Uh, I don't know exactly what she's brandishing. It looks almost like a lantern in terms of like it being sort of like a sword. Um, you know, she has very cute face. Has her signature rippling muscles. I mean, look at those biceps, those abs, the toned legs, the really the. Overall, I think, you know, super athletic, um, chiseled look to her, which definitely falls in line with what she's known for, right? Um, and I think that's great. Has a lantern hanging off of the back. So, like I said, she is going to be the four-star special unit of the banner. So, her kit is going to be a little, you know, um, not, not quite as extravagant as the others. So, we got Flame Goodbye Plus. So, it is going to be an inheritable sword, 14 might. At start of combat, if unit's HP is greater than or equal to 25%, grants attack defense plus 5 to unit and inflicts penalty on foe's attack defense during combat, equal to 20% of unit's defense at start of combat. You know, for an inheritable sword, that, that's a very interesting uh, combination of abilities that's going to really amplify uh, a unit's natural defensive tendency. So if they have a high defense stat, they're really going to enjoy this because it's going to add to their tankiness in a big way. Uh, just inflicting a 20% uh, penalty on the enemy's uh, attack in combat debuff that can't really be negated uh, in most scenarios. And it's going to be 20% of the unit's defense. I mean, that's, that's sizable. So she does have pivot for the assist, which does make sense for a defensive unit to be able to um, sort of bodyguard somebody in front by pivoting over them, that is, and leapfrogging ahead. Um, but she has attack speed ideal 3 for the A slot, which is a little bit odd since you would think its attack defense ideal would make more sense given the fact of how her weapon works, and she's probably going to have pretty high defense. Uh, maybe she'll have high speed as well. And then odd tempest 3 for the C slot, um, which is going to give her an additional movement tile on odd number turns. So feels like a little bit of a slapstick together um, kit, like cobbled together. It, it doesn't really feel all that cohesive. Um, the weapon certainly, I think, is very appealing. Um, I think it has a lot of potential to be really annoying um, in the context of uh, a tanky, you know, tanky sword units out there. Um, but beyond that, nothing like terribly remarkable. Some some skills that are, you know, fodder skills to lead into like attack speed ideal four. Um, Odd Tempest 3 has its uses, and at least being in the 4-star pool is going to be useful. Alright, there is her attacking art. She's going in. She's got the overhanded uh, sword swing going. Uh, you do get a, a you know a better look at her physique overall in, in this particular angle and pose. Uh, and she's definitely looking quite fierce. Again, I love the fiery red of the headdress um, that's trailing behind her. I think that's a super cool effect. So I think it's honestly great art, especially for a four-star focus unit. Uh, so here is going to be Harmonic, Tana, and Peony Flyer, which I certainly appreciate. Love flyers. Green Dagger unit, interesting weapon color combination there. An interesting pairing. You have Tana and Peony. Not not necessarily the bedfellows you would expect. Um, and of course, a, a new... A new artist for Tana, who has traditionally in the game been done by Kaboon, who is doing Lin in this go-around. Um, so uh, Tana uh, mentioning that this is a, a rather bold look um, for them, it seems, and Peony saying, oh, it looks fine to me. Um, but certainly certainly showing some skin here, uh, I'd certainly very much appreciate it. I, I love the fact that Tana's you know, high ponytail does look like it's done up into the headdress, which I think is a really neat effect. She's always had that long swirling, you know, indigo hair, which I think fits really well here. And the headdress just kind of accentuates that. Uh, Peony has has that a uh, mirror of that headdress too, but of course has her little croissant buns on the side instead. Um, she has the Taito drum, and Tana has that uh, that little that little spear. I, I'm sure it has a name, and I'm I'm not saying that right. But anyway, regardless. Um, they have sort of a, a chest wrappings instead of like a full-on ensemble up top, which again is a little on the risque side, um, but definitely looks very, very attractive on both of them. Got the rope belting and then the short skirts, as well as, it's it, interestingly enough, you know, Tana has the little tassels that match her hair and her eyes, um, and Peony has the little tassels that sort of match her, uh, her headdress, really, more than anything else. Uh, they have cute, uh, genuinely cheerful expressions on their faces. Uh, looks like they're having fun together, celebrating the, I don't know, the fire Festival? Uh, it's the Flame Tribe, whatever it is, with the drums. Uh, presumably they're doing some sort of a celebration. Um, 
Naturally, the uh, the sort of daring look up top does give you a, a, a nice generous view of their curves as well as uh, the exposed midriffs are very appealing and the thighs as well. Um, overall look is, again, I think very fitting for both of them. So the weapon is a dagger kindling Tycho 14 might has a killer slaying effect, which does seem to be the theme of the theme of the uh, the banner as a whole. At start of turn, grants Kanto 1 to unit and allies within two spaces of unit for one turn. Really? Well, uh, at start of combat, if unit's HP is greater than or equal to 25%, grants attack speed plus 6 to unit during combat, neutralize effects that prevent unit's follow-up attacks, and also if unit initiates combat against a blue, green, or colorless foe, grants bonus to unit's attack equal during combat equal to 20% of unit's attack at start of combat, and inflicts penalty on foe's attack during combat uh, equal to 20% of foe's attack at the start of combat, effect dagger 7. So... It's a lot to take in. It's a lot to take in. First and foremost, the killer slaying effect, and then the uh, the Kanto buff um, to herself or themselves and allies within two spaces of unit for one turn at the start of the turn is ridiculous. So that is going to be uh, she's going to be an amazing team asset. That is not going to be movement type specific. That means everybody is going to get that Kanto. Um, that's that's very valuable. That's very valuable. It's not going to stack, I don't think, with any existing Kanto effects. But essentially, for uh, t specific team compositions, that means that you can basically forego um, the Kanto, the B-slot, in a lot of instances and replace it with something that you know is more fitting for that particular archetype or, or unit, um, which is very, very valuable. Being able to do that is remarkable. And uh, allies within two spaces of unit, they don't even have to be adjacent. It's at the start of the turn. It's Kanto 1, irrespective of whether or not they are a ranged or a melee unit. Um, all that stuff is, is is quite valuable. So uh, it's such a powerful effect, and, and you don't even get into the rest of the weapon yet. The, the stat boosts that you enjoy, um, not being able, able to prevent her follow-up attacks, and then I'm getting this increased fixed damage and damage uh, reduction, or, well, I guess attack debuff uh, on the enemy on a percentage basis against three of the colors, uh, blue, green, and colorless. I mean, that's very good. Um, makes me kind of lament the fact that, uh, I, I don't want to get too sidetracked, but Pirate Hunoka and Camilla only has an effect against blue units um, that they're effective against. Like, I would have much preferred something like this, where it's like three of the colors of the spectrum, other than the one color that the unit is weak to, she gets to enjoy these buffs. And that's, that's very good. Uh, Glimmer for the special. Attack speed catch four is one of the premier ace slot skills for sure for an offensive unit, player facing unit. Um, which they do look like they are going to be. Uh, wind sweep three. If unit initiates combat, cannot make a follow up attack. Um, if unit speed is greater than foe speed, and foe uses a melee weapon, foe cannot counter attack. So that is, of course, going to synergize with the Tycho because it uh, does neutralize effects that prevent units follow up attack. So that being the case, she does ha have that nice combination of negating the negative effects of wind sweep, but enjoying the benefits. Which means that uh, melee units can't. Uh, can't counterattack them, um, which is fantastic. Uh, speed defense hold inflicts speed defense minus four on foes within three spaces during combat. So that is going to be one of the uh, evolution trees to the rain skills, um, and it's going to be quite good for her because that's going to let her do more damage as well as um, you know have the ability to more naturally. Uh, double, which of course is what she wants. She wants to have high speed to naturally double because she doesn't get a guaranteed follow-up attack from her weapon. Instead, it's just any effects that would prevent the follow-up attack are negated. So overall, this is a fantastic kit, if only for the fact that she has the ability to uh, to buff her allies and herself with a Kanto 1 at the start of the turn. Um, I think that's that's really great. Now, now the key thing here, the, the one of the interesting elements is that it's not a Kanto one that's built into her weapon by default. She has to activate it. So that means it can be countered by effects that negate uh, um, effect activation at the turn start. But that notwithstanding, it's such a powerful effect. It's yeah, it's pretty pretty amazing. So yeah. Uh, so here's their attacking art. I love them moving together. 
in tandem, uh, you know, Peony with the drum, and you've got Tana with the little blade there, um, stretching forward together. Tana, you have her signature side braids that are whipping up uh, you, to give you that sense of momentum. The skirts with the, the frills and the tassels are also just kind of uh, floating up in the air as they're moving forward. Tana has, like, kind of showing off her, her agility a little bit with the one... Um, the uh, the one leg up pose, and then you know Peony with her leg, her wings outstretched, which is um, which is great as well. So yeah, I think uh, I I think they look awesome. I really do. So their harmonized skill uh, grants resonance blades to unit and allies from the same titles as unit. Okay, uh, grants another action really grants another action to ally with the highest HP that is within two spaces has already acted and is from the same titles as unit, excluding unit. So she has a, a built-in refresh um, and resonance blades. So I'm not saying that that's not a very powerful harmonized skill, but it also feels random. Like, it doesn't feel very well thought out, um, nor does it feel particularly cohesive with the rest of their kit. It's going to be useful, don't get me wrong. In fact, it's going to be... It's going to be powerful, but um, but it also feels like an afterthought. It feels like, oh, we forgot to give them a harmonized skill. Let's slap this on them, like kind of thing, right? Because heart resonance blades is just kind of like, oh, well, that's a good buff. Let's that you know, that's it's it's an old buff, but let's it's a good buff. And then let's tack something else on there. What's what's broken? Oh, oh yeah, giving them a refresh. Okay, let's give them a refresh as well uh, within due spaces. I so I don't know if I don't love this harmonized skill just because it it feels lazy. Um, but I do think it's going to be very powerful for them nonetheless. Um, that, that, that I have no doubt of. Oh, and here is their special art as well. So obviously very, very similar to the attacking art, but I just love the whirlwind of flames around them too. I think that adds so, so much to the art. Um, their expressions are a lot more light hearted, I guess. <laughs> they're, they're, they're smiling. Um, they feel, they look like they're elated, but in addition, you know, the, the swirling flames really does afford new lighting effects to them. And I think it, it's interesting. It kind of lights them up a little bit, adds some nice shading effect to like, like Tana's abdomen there and, and midriff. Um, their faces are lit up as well. Again, I, I just like kind of the, the bottom flame effect that's coming out of this special, uh, the special art. So special heroes bite of flame starting on the 7th of September and going for an entire month in terms of overall value for the banner i mean th there's some definitely some some eye openers here i mean i think that the the duo having that kanto buff ability is exceptional um and then their their duo skill is quite good even though again i feel like it's a little ham-fisted i it's it's still good um so they're definitely up there in terms of the value on the banner i think lynn is up there as well i think she is maybe just under the duo if not like around the duo um muspel is also quite quite potent um i i guess i would put him maybe under the other two and then rink is the four star special unit of the banner i mean yeah she, I, she has an interesting weapon but beyond that and some maybe some stepping stone skills beyond that nothing really incredibly um great to write home about so yeah, I mean, she's going to be a, probably a pretty decent merge project um, to get to plus 10. It's going to be easier to get her as the four-star focus unit. But she's also an infantry sword unit, which is a very, very oversaturated pool, right? Um, from an art perspective, the art department, I think they knocked it out of the park. I mean, every one of these units, even Muspel, looks awesome. Um, I, I think every one of them is amazing. And even, you know, the four-star focus, even Rinka looks fantastic in this art style. Now... Uh, thematically, I like the theme. I like the whole like flames and oni and tribe and you know festival type of uh, motif that they're going for here. I think it. I think it's very appealing, eye catching. Uh, has a um, you know has an opportunity to sort of play into it and have like these wild headdresses and uh, extravagant colors and skimpy clothing. I mean, all that together really works really well. Um, you know, that being said, it's not like my favorite theme out there, but the art carries. And the character selection is very strong. So I, so I do expect, and I and I do understand some people having some reservations about getting yet another Lin alt in the game. Honestly, it doesn't really bother me. When you have really popular characters, you have to come to expect that you're going to get continuous alts. It's not just going to stop at some point, um, and and you're just not going to get any more alts for that character. Um, and I get you know diversification. You want to have a lot of different characters represented. I mean, the other three characters on this banner, they they don't have. Um, many alts, if any, so uh, in, in some cases. So, so once again, doesn't really personally bother me, but I do understand where where some people might be coming from if they are kind of sick of seeing Lin alts. Um, but 
I, I certainly am not. And then and, and when you have uh, such a beautiful rendition of Lin in this manner, um, I certainly don't have much to complain about personally. Uh, so with the art being the pedigree that it is and the character selection, a lot of uh, my own personal favorites being on the banner and looking absolutely fantastic, uh, Kaboon art in general, if there is Kaboon art on the banner, that usually means that I'm going to go in hard, and this is no exception. I think uh, I, I'm, I'm probably going to go up to the spark on this banner. Um, definitely going to be targeting Lin and the duo. Would love Rinka's as well. We'll see. We'll see how it ends up going. But definitely somebody on this banner. Uh, but let me know in the comments below what you think about the banner selection, the characters, the theming, the skills. Uh, if you're going to be summoning on this banner, let me know in the comments below who you're going to be going for. Uh, hopefully you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to leave us a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more Fire Emblem Heroes content. We thank you all so much for watching, for taking time out of your day to spend with us. We really, really do appreciate it. And until next time, let's protect those skies.